One of the things that complicates any good financial planning advice is the ever-changing nature of our federal tax system. Every year, Congress enacts new legislation that can create new planning opportunities, but can also change or eliminate things we've become accustomed to. In most years, those changes can be relatively minor, but every once in a while, we get a series of changes that are so substantial that they affect nearly every single taxpayer. As things stand now, we are on the path to one of those scenarios. In 2017, Congress passed a bill called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, or TCJA. Now, this bill included substantial changes to the way income and expenses are treated for tax purposes, changes we've learned to adapt to over the last several years. This bill also included a sunset clause, which means that after 2025, much of our current tax code could revert to rules that were in place nearly a decade earlier. Now, in an earlier video, we discussed the impact of the TCJA on our estate tax system and how the potential sunsetting is affecting the planning we're doing today. Now, those changes may affect a relatively small portion of the population, but in this video, we want to discuss something that has much broader implications, the potential changes to our income tax system. Because the TCJA includes the sunset clause, large portions of that bill are set to automatically expire after 2025. Now, to be fair, it's unlikely all of these provisions will expire and return to the old rules beginning in 2026, but that is the way the law is written right now. What seems more likely is that Congress will eventually pass another bill that extends some of those provisions, modifies some others, and yes, lets some of those expire. What also seems likely is that none of this is going to happen until late in 2025, especially considering that the 2024 presidential election could change the makeup of Congress. What that means is we should all be prepared for lots of speculation, proposals, and even angst over what our tax system might look like in 2026 and beyond. Scenario planning is gonna become much more important, and your Baird Financial Advisor is ready to help you understand the planning opportunities available to you. So let's get into some of the changes that could take effect if the sunset does in fact happen. We'll break this into three parts, beginning with changes to the tax rates and the income brackets, then changes to the rules on deductions and credits, and then some specific implications that will apply to business owners. Let's begin with the potential changes to the tax rates in the income ranges those rates apply to. If the sunset does occur in 2026, most of our current individual tax rates would go up by about two to four percentage points. In addition, the income ranges those rates apply to would also be adjusted, meaning in many cases, taxpayers could reach those higher rates with lower levels of income. This chart compares the current ordinary income tax rates for a married couple in 2024 to Baird's estimate of what those brackets could look like in 2026. Now the 2026 actual numbers won't be known for a while because of inflation adjustments over the next couple of years, but these numbers should be fairly close. For capital gains and dividend taxes, the rates themselves would not change under sunset and the brackets would only be adjusted slightly. Looking at these numbers, it's easy to conclude that taxpayers would end up paying more tax in 2026 as a result of these changes. And in many cases, that would be true. As a result, strategies that can pull income out of 2026 into an earlier year may be appropriate. This would include things like exercising stock options, recognizing capital gains, or even doing a Roth conversion. Now, tax rates are only part of the equation when it comes to your total tax cost. There are other changes coming as part of the sunset that could help offset those increases, although not for everyone. One of the biggest areas of change in the TCJA are the restrictions placed on itemized deductions. Itemized deductions are those expenses incurred by taxpayers that can be used to reduce the amount of income subject to tax, and the TCJA greatly restricted or even eliminated many of those deductions. Under sunsetting, all of those changes would be reversed. Most notably, this means eliminating the $10,000 cap on the deduction for state income and property taxes, commonly referred to as the SALT limitation. Under the sunsetting, those taxes would become fully deductible once again. In addition, taxpayers could begin to deduct a series of miscellaneous expenses, things such as tax preparation fees, investment advisory fees, unreimbursed business expenses, and many more. Your mortgage interest and even the interest on your home equity loan would become much easier to deduct as well. Now, it's not all good news when it comes to itemized deductions. Sunsetting would bring back something called the itemized deduction phase-out. This is a rule that says taxpayers with income above a certain threshold actually begin to lose the benefit of their itemized deductions. Now, while the changes to itemized deductions are significant, the reality is, is they only apply to about one-third of all taxpayers. 
That's because most taxpayers don't itemize their deductions and instead claim something called the standard deduction. The standard deduction is a flat dollar amount that's available to all taxpayers, but is most often claimed by younger taxpayers, retirees, or those who don't own a home. Now, the TCJA nearly doubled the size of the standard deduction, but under sunsetting, it would be reduced by nearly half. As a result, a married couple who claims a standard deduction could expect to see as much as $15,000 of additional taxable income. As a result of these changes, taxpayers should be careful about when they pay tax deductible expenses, in particular charitable contributions. With the standard deduction potentially falling in 2026, more taxpayers will be able to itemize their deductions, meaning expenses like charitable gifts and other things are more likely to provide a tax benefit. As a result, moving 2025 charitable gifts into 2026 could prove valuable. The same could be said about the timing of the 2025 state income and property tax payments, although evaluating the impact of that is harder to do because of other changes coming in 2026. Over the last several years, the Alternative Minimum Tax, or AMT, has been largely forgotten about, with it only applying to those taxpayers with very unique situations. That wasn't the case before the TCJA, and under sunsetting, we could return to the days where the AMT creates an additional tax liability for many taxpayers. This complicates a lot of the planning we've talked about earlier, in particular for those individuals who live in states with high income tax rates. Another set of potential changes involve the tax benefits available for members of your family. The child tax credit would be reduced by half to just $1,000, and the additional $500 credit for other dependents would be eliminated entirely. On the flip side, we'd see the return of something called the personal exemption, this is a flat dollar amount you can deduct for yourself and each member of your household. However, both the credit and the exemption would be subject to a phase out, meaning the benefits of these could be lost for taxpayers at higher income levels. Not all aspects of the TCJA are subject to a sunset. In fact, most of the provisions for businesses were made permanent as part of the original bill. This includes the lower tax rate that applies to C corporations and the expanded Section 179 deduction. It also includes the limitations placed on like-kind exchanges and the deduction for interest expense, as well as limits on the ability to use prior year losses to offset current year income. One business tax change that is subject to the sunset, however, is the Qualified Business Income Deduction, or QBI. This deduction applies to owners of pass-through entities, such as sole proprietorships, partnerships, and S corporations, and allows them to exclude up to 20% of their income from tax. This deduction was enacted to level the playing field between these entities and C corporations with their new lower tax rate. If the QBI deduction does sunset, owners of those entities may want to consider whether converting to a C corporation would be appropriate. We said before that the provisions of the sunset will begin to take effect in 2026, meaning it's likely we continue to operate under our current tax system for the rest of 2024 and 2025. However, any planning we do over the next couple of years will all be done with an eye towards what happens with the sunset. Your Baird Financial Advisor has access to the latest planning tools, as well as a team of tax and planning professionals that can work together to help you best manage your tax costs over these next few years. In the meantime, you can expect to hear any number of proposals coming out of Washington to address these changes. When you hear these proposals, be careful not to overreact. Proposals tend to be light on details, and even a final bill can be changed right up until the point it's enacted. Once again, your Baird Financial Advisor can help you sift through the noise and determine which planning strategies are right given your unique situation. We look forward to partnering with you as these potential changes begin to take effect.